Home Affairs Minister, Dr. Aaron Motswaledi, says Chris Hahn is killer. Yanush Valush has been granted residence and will serve out his parole here in South Africa. The Constitutional Court last week, you'll remember, they set aside Minister Ronald Lamola's 2020 decision to refuse Valush parole and it ordered that he be released within 10 days. Now, this has led to questions around where the Polish national will go once he is freed, as his South African citizenship was revoked back in 2017. Now, Motswaledi says Valush's parole contains a condition that he may not use any travel document or passport issued by the Embassy of Poland. What happened is that in 2013, he applied through the Polish embassy for the citizenship which was granted to him during the apartheid government to be revoked. In other words, he was doing renunciation of his own citizenship. And that application arrived in 2013 via the Polish embassy, which sent it through uh, to Home Affairs via Derko. Home Affairs did nothing, but in 2016, an official started uh, putting up documents which led to uh, 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 his uh, citizenship, uh, starting with permanent residence being revoked. So it was not the department which started. It was a request. All right, let's uh, get more now on this story. And we speak to Janusz Walosz's lawyer, Julian Knight, who joins us on the line. Mr. Knight, thank you very much for your time. Let me start with the question about what is your client's ideal situation here? What does he want to do once he comes out of prison? Well, firstly, I believe that he should be deported. And the reason for this is that the section upon which the minister places reliance in giving him um, temporary residency or permanent residency in this country is contingent upon, firstly, an application being made for that. Mm -hmm. Now, there has been no application from Valis' side um, with regard to that, but I want to also further um, point out that in terms of the same act, there is a um, provision in terms of Section 29, which is prohibited persons. And it says the following um, foreigners are prohibited persons and don't, do not qualify um, for um, a port of entry visa, admission to the Republic, a visa, or a permanent residence permit. And that includes anyone who has a conviction for murder. So my the point is that whilst the Minister of Home Affairs might have done what he's done, mm. um, the Act, in fact, prohibits him from having um, doing that, simply okay. because he's a prohibited person in terms of the, the same Act which uh, deals with exclusions. It's interesting that you, you bring that up because the minister was on television overnight trying to explain this. I'm going to come back to that in a second. So in your answer, first and foremost, you are saying, as Julian Knight, you want for your client to be deported. Are those the express wishes of Janusz Valush? They are. Okay. Now, let, let's come back to what you have said about the minister. The minister says, Janusz Valush, in 2020, it is for the first time that he brings into question in his court processes the Department of Home Affairs. And that no, is... No, that's not correct. Okay. Um, it, it happened, you know, there have been so many review applications that we've won over the years, um, the, the the situation was that he was initially served with a warrant of deportation from the department, and that accompanied his the the reports and everything that went through. Mm. 
Mm. When we brought a review application, the minister then um, re- tried to revoke the decision and brought, brought a self-review to say that it only applied to illegal people. The, de- the, the deportation only applied to people that were here illegally. Mm. And at the time of the commission of the crime, he was he was here legally. But I want to also point out that, albeit that um, Mr. Wallace renounced his citizenship, the the fact is that that document that was forwarded by the Polish embassy was never relied upon by the Department of Home Affairs when they actually revoked his citizenship because they revoked his citizenship on the basis of the commission of the heinous crime mm. of having committed, of having killed um, Chris Harney. Hmm. And so you are contesting what the minister says were two options that were open to Janusz Walusz, and that is that, on the one hand, he was given the option to say, do you want to go back home? In other words, you are no longer a South African citizen, and the other option was that, would you rather stay in South Africa? And that's why the minister says he opted for the latter, and that is why no, he has that, therefore that gone ahead never, and taken that, this decision. That was, that, that was never the case. That was never the case. The fact of the matter was that the initial intention of government at the time was to deport him in the event that he was placed on parole. When we brought the application before Judge Van Nivenhuizen that granted um, his release on parole in 2015, at the time that the leave to appeal was argued, we were then at that stage presented with the letter from Home Affairs, which um, withdrew his, well, basically cancelled his um, citizenship on the basis that um, of the commission of the crime, mm. and that rendered who would have rendered his placement on parole um, impossible. All right, let, let's because, simplify. And then, then subsequently we then um, brought further applications at which stage the minister then reviewed his own decision yeah. to deport him. But, the, but my point of difference with what the minister has now done is that he first of all um, relies upon a section which requires firstly it's premised on an application being made for a dispensation and then the, the further fact is that in terms of the same um, act that he places reliance upon he is a prohibited person and the act clearly says that persons of that have committed those crimes um, are excluded from from being granted um, any form of residency. Let me then... So he's created a, a, a legal conundrum for himself. Yeah. All right. I think for the benefit of the viewer, in order for us not to complicate this conversation, Mr. Knight, what would your attitude be if the Minister of Home, Asse, Home Affairs says the decision to revoke the citizenship of Janusz Valush, that of being a South African, those processes were done illegally or were done incorrectly or irregularly by his department. Would you accept that? No, I wouldn't accept that because they've done it. Um, they they did it at the time, and they, and it is it has been of a force and effect over over the years. So that I, I don't think they can now revoke um, something that they've done in in that matter. They would have to bring another review application. But you know, applications for citizenship are dependent upon a person making application for a citizenship. So you would have to 
go to a situation where he would have to first, in order to entertain something like that, he would then have to become the applicant again to say, listen, I, I actually want to stay in South Africa, so um, please give me back my citizenship. But once you've um, revoked it, you are then functus sufficia as, as, as government. You've made the decision. You mm-hmm. can't now just say, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to um, review my own decision. I quickly want to take the conversation forward. What are your clients' reasons for wanting to be deported to his home country? Does he fear being in South Africa whilst out on parole? Well, I would want to say that there are serious security concerns with regard to the utterances that have been made from various quarters. And I won't mention names on this medium with regard to who is precisely said it, but it's in the public domain, Mm -hmm. where people have said that he should be murdered um, and, and the mob should actually take justice into their own hands. Now, under those circumstances, um, I think it's highly irresponsible of government to actually say, look, you must now do your parole. Given, given the perceived public outrage, um, because it's going to create a situation where government is going to be forced at the expense of the taxpayer mm-hmm. to foot the bill for his accommodation as well as for his protection during the period of time that they want him to serve parole. And the, 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 the other argument there, Mr. Knight, is that in all probability there is precedence for this when you say he's going to have to be accommodated by the state in some safe house and in all probability there will be security around him 24 hours a day. What if government says it has been done before and why would your client be any different if we can provide such? Well, you see, it defeats the whole purpose of parole. If you, if you look at what, what is the purpose of parole, purpose of parole is that you serve the remainder of your sentence under house arrest to to reintroduce you back into society. So let's forget it's valid. Let's just say it's a normal offender. You you get to the point where you are placed on parole, Mm. and that is then your introduction back into society. You can still have a job. You can go to work, but you've got to be home by certain times, and you're subject to certain restrictions. You can go and shop on a Saturday, and you can go to church on a Sunday. And then as your parole ex- proceeds towards your sentence expiry, it is then your conditions are then lessened. But now if you're going to put a person in a safe house, you're basically detaining them um, just in a different premises, in a different form. So you, you, what they're basically saying is, with, you know, we want to extend your, your prison sentence by two years and three months, which would be the parole period applicable to him but that you you won't be able to do it normally. We'll put you in protective custody or we'll put you in um, in a safe house. It defeats the whole purpose of parole, which well, is the in, in reintegration of an offender back into society. Look, that, that could be debatable, but I don't have time, so I'm going to have to allow us to move on from that point because the understanding is that if you're on parole, you are still a client, if you like, of correctional services. But let's let's, let's deal with this final question, therefore. In Poland, is there some kind of a, a receiving party? Is there some kind of a, a welcoming party? Because there is talk that he might receive a hero's welcome there, which will obviously not sit well with the family whom he has wronged here in South Africa, but the general populace of South Africa, the people of South Africa, will be very unhappy with that kind of reception. Is there such that has been prepared for him in Poland? 
Not to my knowledge, and you must also remember that the people that you are referring to are a very small minority of people who have, for reasons not only to themselves, have elevated him to the status that they have. It's been of no doing of, of, him, of, of, of Wallace himself because he's been in prison for the last 28 years without contact to the outside world. So, you know, I don't, I don't believe that there is any heroes welcome awaiting him. Julian Knight speaks for, uh, in fact, he is the lawyer for Janusz Walusz and the countdown, as we have been saying. It is two days to go before he is released. It's a conversation that is likely to gain traction. We're hoping uh, to have the relevant authorities come talk to us. Department of Correctional Services for example, is one such department. What happens now?